Hey guys, welcome back to Chipped or Dipped. This is Jared Bryan, and I'm getting to you, a message to you guys. Um, the last one I talked about, I was in Luke, and I had gotten in Luke because um, uh, the storm and all that, and I was I was excited about giving a message on the storm, and Luke just it kind of got a hold of me in another area. And uh, right now I'm in, and still Luke, but um, Luke, he's um, the message I'm going to give today is. It's still on the subject I was talking about yesterday um, when I made a message about casting out devils and cleaning your house before, um, like, once you clean house, once you ask for, um, you know, Christ to enter in and have the Holy Spirit inside you after you get baptized, I was saying that, you know, if you don't start filling yourself up with the Word and you don't start getting good stuff in, you're, you're basically, you're cleaning your house and you're leaving it empty for demonic spirits to take in and it said that the spirit that was in you before was like oh this is all swept up it's nice let's bring more spirits in and then they take over so I wanted to kind of stay on that subject a little bit I talked about the movie Venom um, if you haven't seen it it's um it's a little it's probably graphic um, I uh, I think that there's even one part where the guy Venom when he's um, a different character he actually bites someone's head off so it's pretty crazy but um, I was just relating that if you ever know like um, uh, if you ever seen anything like with comic books and stuff like that it's just basically it's an entity that attached onto a man like an alien entity but you know this spirits are alien to us you know they they're basically um, they're basically another life being and um, you know, you can have multiple spirits attached to you and not even know it. So that was kind of the message I was talking about last time. Um, and I just, I know Venom related well with, with me as far as like he was using that as, you know, to gain power. And the man was gaining and so was Venom, the uh, alien symbiote. So they were kind of using each other. <clears throat> so, um, and sometimes you feel comfortable with the spirits that have been uh, around you all your life or you know whatever some people can find you know it's just the way that they live their life for so long so it's uncomfortable maybe when that spirit has been removed so I know that's a little deep but I just wanted to throw that out there in case that relates and sits well with anyone to um, you know dive into that thought process now I'm gonna get back into Luke because Jesus has just gotten back from the 40 days where the Spirit had led him into the wilderness and uh, to be tempted by the devil. This is before he started his ministry. And I was just talking to a man of faith that to, I think today, earlier this morning, and we were talking about, no, it was yesterday morning, we were talking about um, uh, just, just the fact that, uh, you know, before he had originally started his ministry, he had done a fast and all that. Um, and I wanted to get this message out because Jesus, before he even started his ministry, he did his fast and he was in the wilderness being tested and getting himself girded up to even be able to have the power and, and all that that he did have to be able to talk. So he's coming back in. He's coming back in. He's riding in um, back to uh, Nazareth. And um, let's go to Luke chapter 4, 18. <clears throat> because... Um, says the spirit of the Lord this is Jesus talking now the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised 19 to preach the acceptable year of the year of the Lord and he closed the book this is 20 and he gave it again to the minister and sat down and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is the script, scripture fulfilled in your ears. So he's he basically came in and he just kind of blew these guys away. He just he just came in and he just said his peace. He let him know who he was and what he was going to be doing. And um, you know that's good. That's a good scripture to stand on because if you're captive to anything. 
you can stand on that scripture because my Lord and Savior has came to set the captives free. He's come to set you free. So anyway, I thought that was really cool. Um, I just wanted to share that with you. <clears throat> but um, and and while I'm on this subject, at when he was being tempted, the devil, you know, you you're gonna have battles along the way. You're gonna be fighting. This spiritual warfare is free. Er, is is real. Um, but it said in 13, if you go to chapter 4, 13, it says, And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. So that, that doesn't mean he was, he was out. That didn't mean that the devil was not going to come back, that he had given up. He was going to come back. He's going he's gonna to keep attacking you. He's going to try and attack you when you're probably at your weakest. He's going to look, he's going to pick his battles. You see... You see a lion, a lion is going to attack the, uh, the one in the herd that is limping when, when you're at your, your vulnerable state. So you have, to realize, you have to realize that kind of stuff because it's, it's one of those things where if you don't guard yourself and be ready for any attack at any season, that's why I'm talking about putting on the breastplate, putting on, getting, getting girded up, getting the armor on daily. So, anyway, just just remember the devil is not going to stop attacking. He might he might let you go for a season, let you get a few things. Then he might come at you with pride. He might let you get your ministry built up. Then he's going to attack you with your ego. He's you know you don't know. Right now he might be attacking your finances. You know that's just at that tech. Once you ha are victorious in that, and he's like, all right, we're going to come back and we're going to try we're going to try this other angle later. We're gonna, you know what? We're gonna let this man get successful. We're gonna, we're gonna just keep letting him go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna attack his pride. He's gonna get so prideful someday. I'm gonna start attacking that area later on. Or he might, he might start attacking you with temptation. If you don't get rid of that stuff now and guard your eyes, he might attack you with temptation, and lustfulness. Look what happened to David. All his generation got messed up after him because of what he did with Bathsheba, you know, the sins of the father. So I just wanted to let you all know that. <clears throat> but um, I'm going to go into this. Luke 5.32 says, <clears throat> And they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power. So if you, if you hear any word that's not of power, it's not of Jesus. It's not... It's not the right word. You're not being preached right. Because we're supposed to have power. There's power in the word. Because the word is your sword. And the sword is living. This, this book will jump out to you. It is the living word. Jesus is the living word. He's the word made flesh. He's your example to follow along. Galatians 6.11 talks about how large of a letter I've written to you. And that's, that is so key because so many people want to hear from the Lord but they're not getting in the word he's he's saying it right here uh, let's see <clears throat> in number 33 and in the synagogue there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil and he cried out with a loud voice saying let us alone what have we to do with thee thou Jesus of Nazareth art thou come to destroy us I know thee who thou art the Holy One of God so the devils knew who he was but the people his people back in Nazareth didn't believe it but, um, and Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace, and come out of him. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him and hurt him not. And they were all amazed, basically. They were like, uh, what, what word is this? For with authority and power he commanded the unclean spirits, and they came out. And so anyway, his fame spread across that area and all that, and he was, he was starting to get noticed. His ministry was building, and um, you know he had to go through something before that for his ministry he had to have that power inside of him and uh, the Holy Spirit is inside you but you have to realize that I talked about there's certain spirits that cannot come out but by prayer and fasting so remember Jesus was just tempted and he was in the wilderness 40 days and 40 nights so he had he was able to have this power because of you know Jesus is now a man he's operating like us and he's showing us a path of what to do before we can attack or even talk against these spirits. 
So I just want you to know that because it's very key because if someone's trying to cast out demons and devils and all that um, and they don't fast and they're not in prayer, a lot of times they're just, these words are just, they're not taking root. They're not doing anything. You're just hearing people, you know, speak. So anyway, um, and Jesus rebuked him, this is 35 now, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him and hurt him not. Um, if you go down to 38, it says, And he arose out of the synagogue and entered into Simon's house. And Simon's wife's mother was taken with a great fever, and they besought him for her. And he stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. And immediately she arose and ministered unto them. So, right there... He's talking about a fever going out. He was able to speak to that fever. And the whole reason I got into Luke was because about speaking to the storm and speaking to the winds and all that. And I didn't even give a message on that the last two days, but it was because that Hurricane Dorian was coming and I was praying about it. But if you realize this, you have to be, you have, you have to do something. You have to be in prayer and fasting to even be able to gird gird yourself up and a lot of people don't even teach fasting and all that so I just wanted you to know that um, let's see now 40 says now when the sun was setting and all they had and any any that they had any sick with diverse diseases diverse diseases mean many um, different diseases um, <clears throat> brought him unto him and he laid hands on every one of them and healed them and the devils also came out of many crying out and saying, Thou art the Christ, the Son of God. And he rebuking them, suffered them not to speak. For they knew he was the Christ. So he didn't want everyone, you know, to necessarily know that he was the Christ yet. Because he kept, he was basically telling the, the demons or the devils that were coming out of the people to hold thy peace. Is, um, he was guarding it. He didn't want all that message to come out yet. He wanted the people to believe with their hearts. But um, anyway... I'm going to jump into Mark real quick because this was really cool. I was talking yesterday about how, you know, when you sweep the house, you know, if, if it's swept clean and you don't fill yourself up with anything, if you don't fill yourself up with the word, many different um, demons might come in more than before you had. And some of these people who are laying hands on you, they're, they're operating with a Kandali, um, I think it's Kandali spirit. And they're laying hands on you and putting different things on you that, that are not good. They're putting demonic stuff on you. And you think it's like a false Holy Spirit. It's a counterfeit. The devil is a counterfeit. So you're thinking you're getting stuff in you. And it's a counterfeit Holy Spirit. So I just want you to realize that the Kandali Spirit is very evil. And um, sometimes when you see people laying on hands and speaking in tongues over you you got to be very guarded and very careful because you have no idea what they're saying. Uh, and you have no idea what they're transferring onto you. So anyway, um, that's very good. Look at Benny Hinn and look at some of these people, these uh, preachers that supposedly lay hands on you. Todd Bentley, he kicks people and punches people like, this is Sparta. And he'll like kick and he'll just, you know, <laughs> it's craziness, but these people are buying it. Because they, they don't, they're not in their word. They're not in the, they're not reading. So anyway, I just wanted you to know that. Um, we're going to go to chapter 5, Mark 5. Um, and it says, who, has, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him? No, not with chains. So, oh, let's go to 2 so you can get the picture. Because um, he had come over... And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. So this man with the unclean spirit met them when they came out of the ship. Who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains. So this man could not be bound with chains. Because he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. So this man was like a beast because he had so much spirits inside him. They would put fetters as basically chains around your ankles. And then you had chains around um, hit basically shackles, you know. Like uh, if you're walking and you hear the clinking like a prisoner. Those things, they couldn't bind him. He just would keep getting out of them. So anyway, um, that was pretty powerful because when you have that much demonic entities, you know, you... 
you probably are very powerful, you know, for the enemy. And that's why I was referencing Venom because the, you know, the enemy gave that man power, vice versa. And they were able to do things that normally they wouldn't be able to do. And I know it's a comic book, but it's just a reference. So you can kind of get an analogy. Um, let's see, number good. Number five, it says, And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. So you see that a lot of people are cutting themselves now. And that's a spirit. That's a spirit that's inside people that, um, it's like a cutting spirit. And, you know, I just, I just want you to know that, you know, that stuff can be rebuked and get out of people. Um, but seven says, And he cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus? Thou son of most high God, I adjure thee by God, and thou torment me not. And 8 says, For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. That's all he had to do. Thou Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? This is Jesus asking, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much, that he would not send them away out of the country. And there was there near unto the mountains, or nigh unto the mountains, a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine, that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea. So there was about 2,000 spirits inside one man that went into 2,000 different swine. That's crazy. Think about how much spirits are inside you. Do a fast. Pray about it. Do, do a fast. Do prayer. If you aren't, ask someone who is in prayer and fasting who is of the Lord to pray over you. This is serious stuff. Because, you know, the people who came to, right after that, the people who took care of the swine, they're like, and they that fed the swine fled, they were scared, and told it in the city and in the country. And they went out to see what it was that was done. And they come to Jesus and see that him that was possessed with the devil, and he had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. So the man that had the legion, he was now in his right mind. He was in his right from your mind. Just from um, one sentence, Jesus had said, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. That's power. Because you see all these pre preachers trying to talk and lay hands on people forever and ever and all that. Realize if you have the power inside you, you can speak and at your word those spirits come out of you. So I just want you to know that. I want you to realize that prayer and fasting is very important and that you can get out things that are on you just by doing that. And there's there sometimes can be more spirits on a person than they even know or want to believe. I had a lot of stuff on me and I didn't realize it. Anyway, that's my message. I hope it helps y'all and uh, be blessed. God is blessing us, and I just thank you guys. You'll have a blessed night. Remember, don't get chipped, get dipped. Night, guys.